मैं सर डॉक्टर के विश्वनाथ आलम मौजूद डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एरोनोटिकल इंजीनियरिंग चंडीगढ़ हैदराबाद इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अ लॉस ऑफ मोशन एज अ पार्ट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मैकेनिक्स कि हम व्हाट इज हियर बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट देयर आर सर्टेन टर्म्स वन हैज टू लर्न बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टडी द लॉस ऑफ मोशन this loss of motion is the part of uh, uh, dynamics there are two parts of engineer mechanics one is uh, statics another one is uh, dynamics so this part is again uh, again uh, divided into dynamics is related to uh, kinetics the kinetics of rigid bodies so to understand the kinetics of rigid bodies and also we are going to study uh, sometimes about kinematics of kinematics as a part of engineer mechanics okay what is kinematics kinematics deals with the only uh, motions of the bodies whereas kinetics deals with not only motions and the forces causing the motions also uh, it's we, we are going to study in that kinetics now here the important terms related to uh, the part of uh, dynamics is the what is the mass what is weight what is the momentum etc the mass is nothing but it is the matter contained in the body the units of the mass is in kilograms or ton okay and the grams also here uh, here the mass is nothing but a matter contained the body there is a mass is related to the mass is multiplied by acceleration due to gravity then it becomes a weight so weight is a force uh, weight is the force by which the body attracted towards the center of uh, center of the earth okay and one more thing is very very important thing is that this weight is uh, okay weight is so important uh, para weight is so important term uh, in studying the kinematics okay, and also kinetics so the what are the weights what is the unit for weight the weights units is uh, newtons or kilonewtons newtons or kilonewtons what is the kilonewton 1000 newtons okay so and one more thing is that weight what is the relation between uh weight how to work on weight is what is the relation between weight and mass weight is in newtons whereas the mass in kilograms so the relation the ex the expression for relation between to understand the relation between the mass and weight that is weight equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity w equal to mg this mass is kg what about g we need for g is meter per second square this is newton so one newton equal to 1 kg meter per second square square second so and here one more thing the a mass and weight and also the body is having under a certain velocity so mass times velocity is known as the momentum so here what is the momentum the momentum is that it's the quantity of the motion quantity of quantity of motion processed by a body so quantity of motion that processed by a body the body means matter the motion means velocity that's why it is the momentum is the product of mass times velocity so mathematically the mass momentum equal to mass times velocity so the mass times velocity momentum momentum equal to mass times velocity what is the mass the mass is in kgs velocity is in meter per second so momentum where is the momentum mass uh, momentum here that is kg per kg meter per sec kg meter per second is the momentum now here we must think what is the kg meter per second square the kg meter per second square is known as the newton the kg meter per second is the momentum so what is the momentum depends upon what is the parameter this momentum depends upon depends on the units of mass and velocity okay so one more thing is that the momentum also affects this mass is there that means matter this body having motion to the body that's what here the quantity of the motion the quantity of the motion processed by a body quantity of motion processed by a body it is known as the momentum that momentum is that my mathematical express this quantity of the motion processed by a body body is matter and the motion is the velocity so mass times velocity is known as the momentum 
Okay, now one more thing. This quantity of the motion that weight in newtons and ma matter is the mass. Okay, all the terms. So it is if the weight should be, if the mass should be under motion, the causing the motion is the force. What is the force equal to mass times acceleration? So that is F equal to mass times acceleration. Mathematical express. What is the mass again? Unit for mass is kg. And acceleration is kg meter per second square. The force that is uh, force F equal to kg meter per second square. That one kg per meter, one kg meter per second square equal to one newton. That's the unit for force, either newton or kilonewton. So this force mathematically is mass times acceleration. But what is the physical meaning? The force is the component, okay, which force is the cause for producing the motion or uh, when the body is at rest or when the body is in motion to stop the, to keep the body at rest. So what is required? The force is required. If you want to, if you want to keep the body in motion or tends to stop the motion, okay, tends to cause the motion, that cause is nothing but a force. The force, the units of the force like here. The weight uh, units of the force is nothing but the units of the force is similar to the units of the weight. The weight and force units are same. That is in newtons or kilonewtons. So mathematically, the force F equal to mass times force F equal to mass times acceleration. As I mentioned here, unit for force is is in newtons in case of SA units, and whereas for in the case of SA unit system. Whereas uh, MK system, it is the dynes, or CJ system, it is the dynes. Now, next important term is known as inertia. This inertia is how to measure the inertia. There are different types of inertias are there. Uh, area movement of inertia and mass movement of inertia. But what is the physical meaning of the inertia is that inertia is inherent property of your body. What it will do, it offers resistance to change the state to change of its state of rest or uniform motion. Okay, inherent property of your body, which offers resistance to the change of the state of rest or uniform motion, that is inertia. As I mentioned here, there are two types of inertia as, as we have studied in the case of statics. It is this inertia is in the case of dynamics. Here in the case of statics, there are two types of inertia. One is area moment of inertia. Area moment of inertia and another one is mass moment of inertia. These two things comes in the case of statics. This area moment of but the inertia is that here the inertia. This in the case of dynamics, inertia means inherent property, but actually resistance to change of resistance to the change of its rest or change of the body's at rest or in uniform motion that resistance is known as inertia here basically in order to study these are the basic things but one thing is that before going to study further the body is uh, in nature either at rest or in motion okay when it is rest and under motion what will happen under rest condition also the body can body will be body will be subjected to certain loads and similarly when the body is under motion also the body will be subjected to certain loads the study of uh, body is at rest and what what is the effect of the force when the load is applied on the body what is the development inside the characteristics inside the, uh, inside the uh, like you know length, the dimension, geometric affecting the geometric properties of the body when the load is applied provided when the body is at rest. Similarly, when the body is under motion, under condition of the motion, it is subjected to certain loads, it is being affected by certain forces, it is being affected by uh, different uh, various types of loads. Then what it will feel, what is the effect of those loads on the body provided when the body is under motion. So that is known as, uh, comes under the topic of all the things, what is the effect of uh, loads when the body is under motion, that is a part of dynamics. 
so these two things but whatever the motion the motion again statics means there is no motion the motion of the body remains zero whereas in dynamics there are two types of motions are there one is linear motion another one is uh, angular motion again in linear and angular motion it is uniform or non uniform a similarly in angular motion uniform angular motion or non uniform angular motion so this uniform or non uniform means its time remains the same doesn't change with the time then it is the motion doesn't change with the time then it is known as uniform motion now motion which changes with the time then it is known as non uniform motion now the point is that linear motion we may call it but again non linear motion means there is up and down it is not constant uniform motion when the bodies are under uniform motion that means it is in linear condition constantly linear means yeah with the time it is proportionately varying then again different terms linear will come but non linearity it changes time to time it is changing okay then it is known as non linear motions so these are the things or uh, the sum and substance completely if you understand when the body is in nature in the universe these two in the under these categories so the study of these bodies completely okay with the time function of the time then it is known as dynamics the function which is not a function with the time then it is known as i mean doesn't change it is under rest then it is known as statics okay now the point is that there are certain equations uniform when the body is under uniform motion what are the equations okay we are, are there in the case of kinetics or kinematics and a linear motion and angular motion so the point is that uh, the point is to understand what we are going to study to in order to apply these uh, of these bodies when it is under motion okay and certain laws are there there are various types of laws the most prominent laws are newton's laws of motion the first law there are three laws the one is first law first newton's first law of motion newton's second law of motion and newton's third law of motion okay these three law indicates uh, about related to the bodies under motions but what type of bodies so newton's is applicable to rigid bodies okay newton's laws of motion is applicable to rigid bodies not for flexible bodies but in nature all bodies are in flexible bodies not rigid bodies but we assume that the body is under rigid condition we we'll apply those laws now uh, there are certain before going to study these rigid bodies and newton's laws of motion more detail uh, let us uh, discuss about certain equations prominent equations of motions what are the equations of motion the equations of motion one of the equation is that v equal to u plus at the next equation equal to is v square minus u square equal to 2 times as the third equation is v equal to sorry s equal to u times ut plus of at square okay and there is one more equation also there here the v equal to u plus a t v square minus u square equal to two times a s and s equal to u t plus of a t square. What is the v? What is u? What is a? And what is t? And what is s? There are four terms are there here: v u, or u v, s, and t. These are all the things. What is the v? Is the final velocity, whereas u is initial velocity of the body. S is the displacement and distance travel, and also where is the t? Is the time. whatever one more is there that is a a is the acceleration okay here again these equations are only when it is traveling in a horizontal plane horizontal in the sense on earth if it is vertical plane again what will come that is acceleration converts into as a gravity acceleration due to gravity when the body is moving from down from earth to up to the sky or vertical upwards If the body is moving from vertically downwards, this gravity will change. The a becomes acceleration due to gravity g. A becomes g when the body is moving upwards or when the body is uh, moving downwards. Now here, these are the equation. What is the v? Is the final velocity? The unit for v is the meter per second, and the unit for u is also meter per second. And unit for s is in meters. The time t is in seconds. 
and a for acceleration that is a meter per second square square second now all these equations are applicable to your body whatever bodies rigid bodies that's why what is rigid body a rigid body consists of innumerable particles that is the first step and the rigid body doesn't change and the distance between the particles doesn't change when the load is applied on the body okay then it is known as the rigid bodies now one more here we are going to study what it is mentioned here if the positions of the various particles remain fixed relative to one another it is called a solid body that means if the position of the various particles remains fixed okay or in other words distance between any two of its particles remains constant it is called a solid body one more thing is that so all solid bodies are not rigidly perfect bodies perfectly rigid bodies okay now we consider it we assume them more or less these solid bodies behave more or less like rigid bodies why the flexibility is very low in the case of solid bodies that's why are uh, not perfectly rigid bodies but more or less we can they are regarded uh, this solid bodies as okay uh, rigid bodies now this newton's laws of motion as i mentioned here this first law second law and third law this first law it is second law and it is third law okay first law indicates what is the first law of motion states that it related to uh, inertia part that means here every body every body is every body is continuous not everybody every body continues in its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless it is acted by some external force okay otherwise continue it is continuous in a state of rest or in motion unless it is acted by some external force it continues and one more thing is that second law indicates that the rate of change of momentum m into v minus u is directly impressed by force and it takes a place in the same direction in which the force acts the force it is related to, to the relation between mass times acceleration there is a force definition so second law defines describes the force and third law also describes the force whatever the force the equal and opposite reaction okay to every action there is always equal and opposite reaction the third law third law states okay the third law motion now how it is equal and opposite reaction where it will be applicable okay this equal and opposite reaction we already used in the case of uh, in the case of statics also when the load is when the weight is there the weight is the 10 newtons the equal reaction the reaction force vertically opposed the reaction will be okay now it indicates that equal and opposite reaction third law second law indicates so f equal to mass times acceleration or uh, straight law uh, the first law also indicates that in its state of rest or of uniform motion okay unless it is acted by some external force it continues either so for what it indicates is the body in its rest only it doesn't move by itself okay some external force should act if it is moving otherwise it will be in its state of rest similarly when the body is under motion if you want to make it rest there is some external force should be acted otherwise it will continue in the state of motion only okay otherwise non stoppable unstoppable either rest position or in motion position okay unless some external force that means first law also indirectly describes the force causing the motion is what force okay and again second law directly defines first law is force is the cause in order to continue or make it the rest when the body is in rest to make it to motion force is the cause to make it into motion when the body is in motion the under motion body to keep it into rest we need the like some certain cause that is also force so if you understand the overall view somehow or another it is indicating what the term that is the, the indicating the force first law and second law and third law the third law says equal and opposite reaction what is the reaction and reaction is a force if you apply equal force and reaction force okay 
So that's why here this first law and the second law, first and second third laws are very very important in order to study uh, the behavior of the bodies when it is under motion or at rest, provided it is being caused by a force. Now what is in Newton's first law? As I mentioned here, the body in its state of rest or in motion in a straight line unless it is being acted by some external force. That's why it is also known as law of inertia. This what, how this law of inertia, it is law of inertia. It consists of the two parts. What is the first part here? A body continues same state unless acted by some external force. It appears to be self-evident that as a train at rest on a level track will not move unless pulled by the engine. Okay. Uh, similarly, a book lying on a table remains at, at rest unless it is lifted or pushed. So, what about you understand? If you understand a little bit, uh, this force who is causing this force? Okay, this Newton's law, this Newton's law, Newton's laws of motion indicates that force is required. Yes, who causes the force that is not defined in the Newton's laws of motion? Who causes that force? Who acts that force? That may be that you may that is term used that is acceleration due to gravitational force. That gravitational force given by whom? That is not addressed that Newton's laws of motion. Okay, Newton's law says that. Okay, what is the cause? What is the cause when it is at rest of rest to make it into to lift that uh, body to lift to lift that body? Suppose this is the pan here on the pan is here on the hand. It will be in the state of rest only unless you lift it or push it out. You have to take it. Then what is causing that? The force is required to lift or to push the body here. It wanted to push like that. Force is required. In order to lift, force is required. Okay. So, but who is giving? Who is the who is that? That the who not address for the question of who? Why was answered here? When the body is at rest, why? Why can't be answered? But who can't be answered in the case of Newton's laws of motion? Now, as Newton's first law has a two parts, there is a first part. Second part is that the first part indicates when the body is at rest, you want to make it into the motion, like the train on the level track, the track or the train in your uh, the coaches will be pulled by the engine. Now, when the body is under uniform velocity, in a state of uniform motion in a straight line, it is compelled by some external force to change its state. It cannot be exemplified because it's practically impossible to get rid of the forces acting on the body. Suppose when the body is under motion, what you will do to come to the rest? You have to apply the brakes. Whereas in the case of the four wheelers or in the case of aircraft, when it is under motion, Okay, if you want to apply the brakes to, after coming on a okay, runway to keep the rest, what to do? You have to apply the external force through brakes. Then you have second part. Part 1, when the body is at rest to make it into the motion. Part 2, when the body is under, when the body is under motion to keep the rest, we need, okay, what to do? What is the cause? Force is required. Okay, there is one first law of motion. Now coming to the second law of motion. Second law of motion, the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to impressive forces and it takes place in the same direction in which the force acts. Now this law is what it will do, it enables to measure the force. Okay, and this force equation F equal to mass times acceleration, it is also known as the fundamental law of dynamics. Okay. Now, in order to derive that force equal to mass times acceleration, we are going to consider that the body is under moving in a straight line motion. It will, its velocity will be changed while moving. Now, let assume that mass equal to m equal to mass of the body, u equal to initial velocity, v is the final velocity of the body, a equal to constant acceleration, and it is the time in seconds required to change the velocity from initial to final or final to initial also, uh, or initial to final, and F is F equal to force required to change the velocity from initial velocity to final velocity in time, t seconds. 
Now, what is the momentum? As we have studied that, momentum mass equal to, momentum equal to mass times velocity. So, initial momentum equal to mass times initial velocity, final momentum equal to mass times final velocity, that is mu and mv. Now, what is the rate of change of momentum? Change of momentum means m into v minus mv minus mu. Change of momentum. Change of momentum. That is mv minus mu. That is m into v minus u. What is your rate of change of momentum? Then, rate of change of momentum that equal to m into v minus u by t. That is mv minus mu by t. That is m into v minus u by t. That is m into v minus u by t. Change in velocity with respect to time is known as acceleration. Thus, rate of change of momentum describes the force that defines the force that f equal to mass times acceleration okay now according to newton's second of motion the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the force that f equal f is directly proportional to ma f equal to k times ma where k is the constant of proportionality okay so this k is considered as a unit then f equal to ma mass times acceleration now what is the unit for mass in SA system in SA system of units the units of the force is newton or uh, briefly it is written as capital n okay this one newton equal to one kg meter per second square second so you newton what is the newton how to define the newton newton is defined as a force while acting upon a mass of 1 kg produces one acceleration produce an acceleration of 1 meter per second square square second in the direction of which acts okay it is so simple to understand it and it is also very good suppose force f is acting okay f equal to what 1 newton i said the newton means when the newton is the force acting on one kg mass which produces one acceleration of one meter per second square square second on one kg mass on one kg body it gives acceleration is one meter per square second is but in the direction of the force that is known as Newton. Okay. Now, as you have mentioned before, uh, what is mass force equal to mass times acceleration? We have studied first law and the second law of motion. Now, let us solve based on the equations of motion and Newton's laws of motion. Now, a body of mass, 7.5 kilograms, is moving with a velocity of 1.2 meter per second. If a force of 50 newtons is applied on the body, determine its velocity after 2 seconds. Here its velocity after 2 seconds, that means final velocity V to be calculated. What is the mass of the body? It is 7.5 kilograms. Velocity, initial velocity was given here, that is 1.2 meter per second. And the force of 50 newtons. And we want final velocity. Okay, final velocity and initial velocity and the time. Is there given any acceleration? Yes. Okay, that is V equal to U plus AT. Final velocity. This is a derived expression. But U we know time T, time 2 seconds, whatever the A. A comes from where? Acceleration from equation F equal to MA. And A equal to F by M. What is the F? What is F equal to? 15 Newtons. Substitute here. 15 Newtons by M. Mass is 7.5 kg. That is A equal to 2 meter per square second. We know U. We know A. And T. Time T. Finally, V equal to U plus A T. In that equation, if you substitute V, U, A T, then you will get it final velocity. V equal to U plus A, U is 1.2 meter per second plus 
acceleration that a is what is a equal to 2 meter per square second and t is the time 2 seconds then v equal to 5.2 meter per second this is the final velocity okay after 2 seconds when the load is applied when the force is applied 15 newtons on how much 7.5 kilograms and which is moving 1.2 meter per second okay when when 15 newtons are acting on your body of mass 7.5 kilograms giving the acceleration of 2 meter per square second square, square second after 2 seconds the final velocity of the body become 5.2 meter per second but initial velocity is 1.2 meter per second that means the velocity is increased or decreased velocity increase from 1.2 meter per second to 5.2 meter per second when the load here, when the force is applied to 15 newtons with on a mass of 7.5 kilograms okay that's what the meaning of this problem the next sum a constant retarding force 15 newton 50 newtons is applied to a body of mass 20 kg moving initially with a velocity of 15 meter per second how long body how long the body will take to stop it is your retarding force that is 50 15 newtons okay and a mass of 20 kilograms moving initially with a velocity of 15 meter per second how long the body will how long the body will take to stop now the given data retarding force f equal to 15 newtons mass of the body that is 20 kilograms 20 kg initial velocity 15 meter per second okay and if you want to stop how long the body will take that means final body become, final velocity becomes zero but what to be how long that means what is the time it will take be coming to rest that is what how long the body time to be calculated here now we know that from second newton second law motion f equal to m a from that a equal to f by m Substitute F and M, 50 by 20, that is 2.5 meter per square second. Now, final velocity of the body, that V equal to U plus A T, in that V equal to 0, and U we know, what is that U equal to? U is the initial velocity, that is 15 meter per second. And here, the, what is the acceleration? The acceleration is retarding acceleration. What is the retarding acceleration? This A becomes minus A, that is 2.5 meter per square second, minus 2.5 times T. From that, T comes, that is 15 by 2.5, that is 6 seconds. To come to rest, we need how much? Okay, that is 6 seconds. What is the time, how long the body will take, will take to stop? 6 seconds it takes to come to stop okay next one a car of mass a car of mass 2.5 tons moves on a level road under the action of 1 kN propelling force find the time taken by the car to increase its velocity from 36 km per hour to 54 km per hour that is what kmph kilometer per hour now here a car of mass what is the mass that's 2.5 ton the 2.5 t okay oh, now convert into kgs one ton one ton equal to how many kgs one ton equal to thousand kgs okay we are going to make it here now propelling force a uh, propelling force f equal to 1 kilo newton initial velocity that is 36 and final well 36 kmph 36 convert into I'm going to mention here meter per second that is 36 km kilometer okay per hour that is 36 kilometer one how many meters thousand meters one hour one hour how many seconds 60 minutes and 60 seconds okay 60 minutes one minute again 60 seconds if you make it calculation then 360 by 36 360 by 36 that means 10 meter per second 
And final velocity is a 54 kmph. kmph again, how to how it comes? 54,000 by 3600, then 15 meter per second. Let the time taken by the car to increase its speed. Now acceleration of the car, acceleration A equal to force by mass. That is, they make it as propelling force 1 kN. In comes of here 1 by mass, that is 2.5. Okay, what they made it here, mass equal to 2.5 tons, that is 1 ton equal to 1000 kgs. Okay, and what is the action of the force? Force F equal to 1 kilonewtons, that is 1 into, that is 1 kilonewton equal to 1000 newtons. Now here substituted A equal to F 1000 newtons by, what about this 2.5 tons, 2.5 into 1000. This thousand and thousand get cancelled. Okay, then what will happen here? Newton bar kgs. Okay, then it is meter per second square. One by two point five. That is point four zero point four meter per square second. Now final velocity of the car v equal to u plus e a t. That is v is the fifteen u. That is u equal to ten plus e a t. A is the point zero point four and t. Then from that time t comes. That is twelve point five seconds. T equal to 12.5 seconds. Now final, next problem is that a multiple unit of electrical train has 800 tons mass. Electrical train is having huge amount of mass. Remember, 1 ton equal to, 1 ton equal to how many kgs? 1000 kgs. The resistance to motion is 100 newtons per ton of the train mass. If the electric motors can provide 200 kilonewtons of tractive force, how long does it take to accelerate the train to speed of 19 km per hour from rest? Okay, from rest to make it 90 km per hour, how, how long does it take? Space? What is the time? Now 800 tons, resistance to motion, 100 newtons per ton, that is 100 into 800, that is 800, that is 80,000 newtons, that is 80 kilonewtons, tractive force 200 kilonewtons, final velocity V equal to 90 kmph, that is 25 meter per second, and initial velocity is 0. Now, you have to begin. The net force available to move the train, net force is that, tractive force minus resistance to motion, that is 200 minus 80, that is 120 kilonewtons. Now, here acceleration of the train A equal to F by M. A equal to F by M. What is the F is? 120 kilonewtons and M 800 tons. 800 into 1000 kgs. We have to make it in newtons and kgs. Then acceleration comes in meter per square second. 1000, 1000 get cancelled. 0, 0, 12 by 80. That is 0 0.15 meter per square second. We know A. Now, what is the final equation? V u a t. V equal to u plus e a t. What is the final velocity? 25 meter per second. Initial velocity is 0. Acceleration a equal to 0 0.15 meter per square second. At a time t is required. The time t is 166.7 seconds. Takes time. That is how many minutes? Okay. This is 2 point. Okay. More than 2 minutes and less than 3 minutes. Okay, we can understand here how much 166.7 minus 120, that is 46.7, that is 2 minutes 46.7 seconds required to take the train to the speed of 90 kmph, 90 km per hour from rest to this, uh, this velocity, 90 km, km per hour. So it takes, it is not like 1 second quickly, so 2 minutes. 46.7 seconds required to take the acceleration, I mean to take the speed of uh, 90, 90 kmph of the train, okay, speed. Okay, in this session we covered what, is the, what are the loss of motion, before that what are the terms, again what are the equation of motions and also how to apply those equations of motion, okay, and also Newton's second law of motion and solve the problems. Thank you. These are the references followed. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.